Hi everyone, this is the Math 30-1 Functions Review and this is question 8. It says solve the polynomial equation, they give it to you here right here. State the largest possible solution here, okay, the largest solution. Okay, well the first thing that we're going to do, when we've got a polynomial like that, is we're going to make sure it's set equal to 0. Okay, so we're going to bring that, whoops, sorry, that should be 33x, 33x, uh, minus 36 is equal to 0. Now we want it equal to 0 because our method of solving here is going to be um, to to factor this expression and then because it's equal to zero then the factors themselves individually would go to zero to to make that work there oh that's a little hard to see there but anyway um, now to factor this uh, there's a few things you can do here uh, we can use the factor theorem one of the things <coughs> that you're going to be required to do is to identify the possible factors here and the way you do that, remember, is you look at the constant term. So my possible factors are going to be x plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3. Oh, sorry, I wrote 2 there. I meant 3. x plus or minus 4, x plus or minus 6, x plus or minus, what is it going to be, 12, x plus or minus 18, and then x plus or minus 36. We got a lot of options here. Okay, so to use the factor theorem, remember we, we substitute these in one at a time here and look for zero as our remainder here. Now, there are a couple of things that we can do to expedite this. Now, I wanna show you a couple of things you can use in your calculator to make this a little bit quicker here. Okay, so here's the calculator here. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna get a little bit of glare here. I'm gonna rotate that so it's a little less, whoops. Okay, that was fun. That's right. <laughs> gonna rotate that so a little bit less of a glare here. What we're gonna do here is go y equals, and I've already entered in that function into y equals. Now, I can graph this, and I will graph it in just a moment here and show you that option as well, but I wanna show you something that the calculator can do that you might not have been aware of. If you press the VARS button, okay, so VARS right here, okay, one of the options you get at the top here is y VARS. And that's where we put the equation. So we put the equation in y vars, uh, and we entered in a function. So we're going to press enter for function here, and we put the function in y1, that equation here. Now, if I do this, if I now put bracket, and let's say I put positive 1 in here, this acts like function notation. And I can check, uh, and basically what I'm doing is I'm evaluating that polynomial at 1. Well, that didn't work. That got me negative 12. So I'm going to press second enter pulls that up again. I will just put negative one in there. Still not getting zero. I'm looking for zero. So press second enter. I will put a two in there. So it gets me negative two. Second enter. I will put negative two in there. Whoops, sorry, negative two. Okay, second enter. I will put three in there. And there we go. So that, this is one way that I can find uh, very, very quickly running through the, the factor theorem, just using the calculator to do it. Instead of going through and doing each one kind of individually by hand or even plugging the whole thing in the calculator, I just have to enter the, the equation in once and I can go through and, whoops, sorry. And I can go through and enter all those in using, using function notation essentially. But I can see right there that three is going to be a a root. Now another thing that I can do is I can just look at the graph, okay? And I can see that my graph is hitting the x-axis here at at 3. And now I, this is a, a lot more difficult to see on this graph here. I should try zooming in here. But you'll notice here that actually the graph comes up, hits the 3, drops back down and goes up through the 4. So the 4 is also going to work. Okay, so I can do that. Another thing that I can do is I can go to my table of values. Okay, and when I go down my table of values, notice that when x is 3 and 4, I'm getting zeros here. In, in whatever you choose to do here, what we're looking for are those zeros. And so when I get that zero there, and I know that 3 is one of them, okay, this tells me that x minus 3 is a factor. So now in order to keep moving here, I've got to factor that out. So I'm going to use, let's say, synthetic division. Okay, so I will put a positive 3 outside here. Now, I already know my, what the roots are because I looked at the graph, but I'm going to just work from the assumption that I don't, and that I'm going to factor that out. So 1, 
negative 10, 33, 36. Okay, so bring down the 1, multiply by 3, add. I'm going to be negative 7. Multiply by 3, negative 21, add. And that's just a simple matter of uh, basically just subtracting. Okay, now wait a minute. I am expecting it. Did I miss? Oh, sorry, that should be negative 36. Yeah. Sorry about that. Because when I multiply by the 12 by 3, I get positive 36. I should be getting a 0 because I chose a factor here. So when I took, when I divided out the x minus 3, I was left with x squared minus 7x plus 12. This is all equal to 0. With the quadratic, I should be able to factor that down without too much effort, and that's going to be minus 3 x uh, plus 4, sorry, not plus 4, minus 4, sorry, I want that final product to be positive, so that's got to be negative here. So I'm getting two, two factors of 3 and 1 of 4, so my answers here were 3 and 4, but this question asked me for the largest, therefore x is equal to 4. That's a good question.